good afternoon and welcome. Today's hearing will shine a light on what Congress intended when it passed the Home Rule Act in 1973. We're not here to discuss the soundness of uh, the district having a budget authority as a policy matter. Our goal today is to, to determine whether the Local Budget Autonomy Act was consistent with the Home Rule Act and acted by Congress. In addition, today's hearing will seek to identify the potential ramifications that we may face by the District of Columbia and local D.C. government employees in the event uh, the Local Budget Autonomy Act is enforced. And at the outset of our country, the Founding Fathers saw fit to vest in Congress the constitutional right to maintain supreme legislative authority over the district. So it is important, uh, so important was this that the authority uh, to James Madison that he even took uh, time to expand uh, upon the necessity of the federal government having an independent seat in the Federalist uh, Number 43. It was a result of this uh, indispensable necessity, as Madison described it, for an independent seat of government that the District of Columbia was created. And in 1973, Congress undertook the process of delegating to the district a limited home rule for the first time in roughly 100 years. And it did so undoubtedly with the need to maintain its constitutionally vested authority in mind. The voluminous congressional record associated with the Home Rule Act serves to demonstrate the need to balance popular sovereignty for the people of the district against the essential requirement that Congress maintain its supreme legislative authority. Reviewing the record shows that numerous debates, hearings, and discussions were had over many of the provisions in the final Home Rule Act. In fact, the debates and editing continued all the way through to the House floor where very important clarifying changes were made that were incorporated in the final version of the Act. During the floor debate, a number of edits were made which, in the words of one of the principal architects of the Home Rule Act, Chairman Charles Cole Diggs, Jr., clarified the intent uh, of the Act. I ask unanimous consent that the Chairman Charles Cole Diggs, Jr.'s dear colleague letter, dated October the 9th, 1973, be put in the record, and without objection, so ordered. Among these edits was the express retention of the appropriations power of Congress and the role of the federal government as a whole in the budgetary process as it relates to the district. The intent to retain the role of the federal government in the budgetary process went unquestioned for nearly 40 years. In 2012, however, the district unilaterally claimed that this was not the congressional intent of the Home Rule Act and passed a Local Budget Autonomy Act. The Local Budget Autonomy Act was voted on by less than 10 percent of the eligible voters in the District of Columbia. This act is currently involved in litigation at the federal level regarding its legal status and was previously the subject of extended litigation in both the federal and state courts with the House Bipartisan Legal Advisory Group having supported the plaintiff challenging the act's legality. As such, its status uh, remains in legal limbo until the courts issue a final and definitive ruling. The Local Budget Autonomy Act is not settled law, as some have asserted. Further, the GAO, or the Government Accountability Office, issued an opinion in January of 2000. 14, stating that they believe the enforcement of this act would constitute a violation of the Anti-Deficiency Act. As a result, should the district attempt to enforce this act, D.C. employees could face repercussions, including those which stem from the Anti-Deficiency Act violations. These employees could then be subjected to potential administrative penalties and could even be subject to criminal liabilities for violating the act. Former D.C. Mayor Vincent Gray expressed these concerns of subjecting district employees to the possible administrative and criminal punishments for enforcing the Local Budget Autonomy Act in his April 11, 2014 letter to the Council of the District of Columbia, stating that he would not implement the Local Budget Autonomy Act. So I ask for unanimous consent to enter this letter into the record, and hearing no objection, so ordered. I'd like to thank all the witnesses for agreeing to testify before the committee today. 
We were fortunate to have attorneys who participated in litigating this issue, uh, the chairman of the council of the District of Columbia and a member of GAO's general counsel's office, also members of the congressional staff who uh, were involved in the drafting of the Home Rule Act at the time of its passage. I look forward to hearing from each of you on this very important issue. And I now recognize my good friend, Mr. Connolly, the ranking member of the Subcommittee on Government Operations, for his opening statement. Thank you, Mr.